Hi everyone, Blessed Holy Thursday from Woods Worship. I had the privilege this morning of sharing a reflection at um, St. Francis in Wontoff for their morning prayer. And I just wanted to share a little bit of it with you. Um, these days of the year, these uh, days of the Holy Triduum that we're in right now, can be a, you know, a bit chaotic, especially for those of us that are really involved in the church. A lot going on. And, um, you know, it's like the pinnacle of our whole year. It's where everything comes together, uh, everything that we believe in. And we need to take an opportunity to really process what's going on. So for Holy Thursday, um, for me, um, you know, the way it always starts, it often starts with morning prayer at our local parishes, and then traditionally it would then go into the Chrism Mass at the cathedral. We now have that on uh, Tuesday of Holy Week, but same same premise. Um, it's a celebration of the, um, the institution of the priesthood and an opportunity for our priests to renew their priestly vows, um, and also for the blessing of the oils and the chrism that will be going out to all the parishes for all the sacraments in the coming year. Um, and it's such a beautiful gathering of so many um, lay people from throughout the diocese, so many people coming together from all their individual parishes. There's people from the different Catholic high schools and uh, college campus ministries, and then just so many of our priests and deacons and our bishops as well there um, to renew their vows and to really commit to uh, continuing to serve the people of God and to bring about the kingdom of God here on earth. So um, you start out with that mass at such a high. The music is, oh, divine. It, it, please go if you have the chance next year. Um, but the music is just so incredible and uplifting. And um, just seeing all of our priests there and the love that the people have for them, it is such an inspiring moment. So you, you start with that. Then you um, have some downtime in between, and then we go into the Mass of the Lord's Supper, um, which is Holy Thursday night. We'll be getting into that shortly. And um, that Mass, again, is a, a strong emotional point. We're commemorating, basically, the first Mass when Jesus instituted the Eucharist, and again, focusing on the institution of the priesthood, and uh, Jesus' command for us to do to others as he has done to us with the washing of the apostles' feet. Um, it's such a, uh, such a moment for us to join closely with Jesus. We're, we can picture ourselves back in the upper room with the apostles. We can picture ourselves in the shoes of the apostles, and just to imagine what they must have been thinking, you know, we have the advantage of knowing what's to come in the coming days, but um, it was all new to them. They didn't know what was next. They didn't know the, the significance of what was going on. So uh, maybe while we're at Mass tonight, we can put ourselves in the shoes of the apostles and um, try to imagine what it was like to be there with Jesus in the flesh. We have the privilege of being with Jesus in the flesh, in the Eucharist, but to be with him in his human form, um, it must have been such a, a wild gift. And then following that, then we usually go uh, with a procession to repose the Blessed Sacrament um, somewhere else. We put the Eucharist in a tabernacle, um, not just somewhere other than where Jesus normally is. And the reason for that is to commemorate the time in the garden when Jesus went to pray following the Last Supper, when he went to pray. And he asked his disciples, please keep watch with me. Stay with me. Stay awake with me and pray with me. So when we repose the Blessed Sacrament, it's an opportunity for us to keep watch. It's an opportunity for us to stay awake with Jesus and to pray with him. And, you know, so many times we get caught up in, not even caught up in, but just thinking of the notion that, you know, Jesus is God, Jesus is omnipotent, um, and just omniscient, and he, he knows it all. He knows every corner of our hearts, because he does. But he wants to have that relationship with us, and he wants to talk with us. So it gives us an opportunity for this one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus to talk with him, to tell him our hearts. He wants to hear it in our own words, to tell him what's going on in our lives, um, but also to listen to what he has to say to us. So let's take that time tonight in our small time of adoration following Mass to really 
have a sit down with Jesus and to really um, be as present as we can to him. We get caught up with all the distractions of the world, with our phones, with our, um, you know, million things running through our minds. It's just so hard for us to be still and to be present. And that becomes an opportunity for us to beat ourselves up too, which really goes, it interrupts our prayer and goes against our prayer. Um, if we're constantly, if when we're sitting there in prayer and our mind is going here and there, then, you know, a lot of times we're like, oh, like I, I know with myself, be like, come on, Chris, come on, just focus, bring it back, pay attention to Jesus. Why are you thinking about what you're having for lunch? Why are you thinking about, you know, oh, that I, I forgot to, uh, you know, get my oil changed to my car and you beat yourself up over it. But what, a great thing that one of the brothers in the Capuchin said taught me. He said, when those distractions come in, just gently push them away. Imagine them like on a little boat on the sea and you're just gently gliding them away and sending them away and coming back to Jesus. So don't beat yourself up for it because it's natural for us as humans and especially in today's busy and noisy world. When we have that quiet, our brains are going and going. So take a moment and just let the thoughts sail away. And just take some time with Jesus and keep on recentering. If you doze off a little bit because it's been a long day, when you come back to, okay, I'm here with you, Jesus. And take that opportunity. Let him minister to you. Before you start praying tonight, ask Jesus what graces he wants to give you and ask him to be abundantly generous with those and to just pour them out into your life. Then in the coming days after that, we have just, again, so much emotion, so many moments that are so pivotal to our faith. While you're going through them, ask Jesus and Mary to journey with you. Ask them to help you to, um, to focus more deeply on what's going on and to be joined closer to Jesus' most sacred heart and Mary's immaculate heart. Please know of the prayers of both Elizabeth and I in these coming days as we're going throughout the Triduum. And um, if you get the chance, please pray the Divine Mercy Novena with us. It's on our YouTube channel. Um, you start on Good Friday and keep on going right on through. So um, please pray with us and please know of our prayers for you in these holy days. And may you continue to grow closer to our Lord. God bless you.